Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Sorry, I got a little frog in my voice, got a little cold, but I wanted to do a video. Been laying in bed and needed to get up and do something. So I just want to introduce these two power supplies I use in my lab and my videos. I thought I'd do a quick review because I've been really happy with both these power supplies and I thought we'd do a quick review and open the hood. Look underneath them, take a look. Um, this one up here is a GW Instatech, or Instec, <clears throat> Instec, GW, ah, um, GPC 3030D. Now, these are tracking power supplies. They're both tracking, they both have 5 volt output, fixed 5 volt output. Um, and the, or I'm sorry, this one, okay, you know what? Actually, I've never used this, and I just noticed something. This is a fixed 5 volt, 3 amp. This one, I think, has a variable, 0, 6, uh, 5 amps. So, wow. All right. So if I need a low voltage power supply, I can use this guy as my third, my backup. I didn't know that. The output 1 and 2 on both these guys can be used in uh, series or tracking or parallel. And that's really cool because you can double your voltage if you put them in series. Um, and you can put one meter for volts, one meter for current, so you can watch both. Um, you can do put them in parallel if you just need more current. Um, and <clears throat> and there's a master, so you just hook them in parallel and use the master. We're going to walk through that, kind of show how that's done. Set the current limits on both of them. Protect your circuits. Um, I like the GWS Tech because I wanted one with variable knobs. I like using those quite a bit so I use this one quite a bit also uh, the tracking power supplies uh, for audio if you need plus or minus 20 plus or minus 30 volts well this one goes up to uh, plus or minus 30 to 30 volt outputs so for that I put them in series use this for the return the center and then I have plus or minus or you can use them in series so you know very flexible tracking power supplies very flexible and this one, you just plug it in, it's programmable, it's got its, it's, got its cool features. So, um, yeah, anyway, um, so I'm playing with the buttons here, and you can set the current voltage just like you can here. Um, we'll walk through that, look at that, and then we'll open up the hood and look inside each one of them. Um, but this one's Tektronix PS2521G. And this is the GPC 3030D. I think I said that already. <sighs> okay, guys. Uh, they both have fans. They're both kind of noisy. I'll turn them off. You can kind of hear. Uh, Get so quieter. But anyway, turn them on. And they both sound the same. They both have the same. We'll look, we'll look under the hood and take a look. But anyway, I say a thumbs up for both of them. Really, really happy with them. I got lucky and picked two good power supplies. All right, guys, let's do it. Hey, thanks for watching. Sorry about the voice. All right, um, for the setup, it's pretty simple. You use one of these big old 200 watt four ohm resistors. This is an eight ohm. I use that for audio stuff. And I might just put this on top so it'll help heat sink some heat off of this guy. And, uh, so the wires come off here from the power supply. The red wire will go through the uh, hand tech uh, current probe, go through the resistor, and come out of the resistor. The black wire returns to the power supply. And then we have the scope right here. So the, the lead's going to the power supply and carrying that current. We're not going to really see the voltage drop across them here. We're just reading the voltage here at the resistor. I'm not sure if we're going to see much voltage drop across those leads. I don't really know what the resistance is on these leads. I don't know how much resistance is in here versus this. But these are supposed to be non-inductive resistors for audio stuff. All right, and so that's the Tektronix power supply that's plugged into right now. Let's start running some tests. Okay, the two power supplies we're looking at very, look very similar to each other because they are. They are very similar, but they also look different, and they're also different. <laughs> So anyway, this one has knobs and this one has buttons. Uh, that's the main difference between them. This one can do, 
This one is the GW, the Goodwill Industries, dual tracking with 5 volt fixed, model GPC3030D. This one is the Tektronix PS2521G programmable power supply. Okay. Um, this one can do um, 20 volts on two of its outputs, up to two and a half amps. And the other one goes to zero to six at five amps. So it's kind of nice as a third power supply. This one does two. This one goes to 30 volts. So each has two outputs. Each one go 30 volts. Um, and each one go three amps. So each one of these outputs, 30 volts times 3 amps is 90 watts. So each one can put out 90 watts, 180 watts across both of them. And this one's 20 volts, 2 and a half, so that's what, 50 watts. So 50 watts, 50, 100, you know, 50 watts and 50 watts, and 90 and 90. When you look at it that way, higher voltage and higher current, this one puts out a lot more power. And also, this one's a fixed output though, 5 volts max 3 amps versus uh, 0 to 6 at um, 5 amps. Now it's called a tracking power supply because it's really cool because you can have you know three individual outputs that's called independent here these both both the buttons out like that are independent if they're this one's in this one's out then they're in series so you can put them in series so instead of 230 volts you can have 60 volts or you can put them in parallel you push both those buttons in like it shows there and then each one now you can go back now, now you're back to 30 volts max but instead of 3 amps it's double it's 6 amps so you can go series parallel or independent and then you independently control the voltage on this side and the voltage on this side. So you can have 5 volts on here, 5.2 or 12.2. So that's independent. Now when you hook them into series or parallel, either one of them, one of the outputs has to be a master. In this case it's this one and it's controlled by this one. It says master here, these knobs, and the slave is over here and down here uh, output 2 is the master and this is a slave so same thing hook them in parallel series or independent now this one has one ground this is shows the chassis ground it's green it's tied to the metal housing it's tied to your AC input ground, so that's your ground if you ever need one, if you want it for some reason. And here, you have them um, right here. There's one for each one. It's just the way it's kind of laid out. This ground is tied to this one, and they're both tied to the housing. So one, one thing with this one is you can't use those dual jacks because they, they're not wide enough, right? Down here, I think that's one advantage is you can use a dual, I think. I haven't tried to do that yet, but I think they're spaced. They look like they're spaced about right. Okay. Um, yeah, they look like they're spaced right. I have the jack in here, the female. But, yeah, it looks like they're spaced. It looks like they're spaced right. So that's one advantage of doing it this way and then having your ground off to the side. I think this is kind of an older way. Because a lot of times you'd have like these lugs that you tie the earth to ground if you wanted to. So anyway, very similar power supplies. Main difference, this one puts out higher voltage, higher current, and it's variable. I really like the variable feature. I use this power supply more often, I think. Um, when I bring up something brand new, I like to bring it up slow. If I've designed something new, if I've bought something new, I like to bring up the voltage slow so I can do it with this instead of plugging in the voltage here because once you set the voltage and the current here, then you just hit the button and it turns it on and off. But that's also a really cool feature because if you're working with something, let's say it's a 12 volt, uh, runs off 12 volts, then when you want to turn it off, you just turn it off. When you want to turn it on, you just turn it on. And so that's kind of neat. 
So that's also very useful once you're confident that your product's working, you know, correctly. Um, otherwise, this guy is invaluable. You can sit here and go one volt, then two volts. You can go, that's basically like a digital power up, right? Versus like an analog power up. So, um, so I have both because I actually bought this one first, got a good deal on this one. And then I realized, wow, I really want the variable knobs. So then I went searching for this one. I found the Tektronix that look very similar to this. I'll give you the model number right here. I mean, it looked identical actually, almost, except for maybe, you know, colors and stuff like that. But um, this almost looks like Tektronix screen, I think, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'll give you that number just in case you're shopping. You can shop for either one of them. I was actually looking for Tektronix when I luckily found this GW. And build quality, everything's very good. Very, very happy with this. We're gonna bust open the hood and look inside. And we'll look inside both of them and compare them. And you can see how well, um, you know, I mean, a lot of us are very confident with Tektronix products. And you'll see when you look in this, that you should be confident using this guy as well. Now, if you haven't used the tracking power supply, the reason they call it tracking is, is when you put them in parallel or series, one power supply output will control the other one. They track each other. And so if you want a plus minus, say 20 volts or 22 or 30 volts or whatever it is on your amplifier, let's say you're doing audio amplifier, you want plus minus voltage, well, you can do plus or minus. You treat them, you know, you just stack them on top of each other, put them in series, right? So minus plus, minus plus. So you, if you tie these two guys together, treat that as your center point, and this is your plus voltage, and that's your minus. And as you control this, you get your plus or minus voltage coming up. It's really nice. And what's really nice about both of these is you can set your current limit. So if you want to protect your product, if you're powering something up and you're not sure, you might want to set the current really low to start with. If you start getting a little more confident, you know that you're going to pull, say, one amp, you can set this at just above one amp, say, one and a half amps, for instance. Then, if there's a problem, this guy will current limit itself to one and a half amps. Each output's capable of doing that, same as this. So, like I say, they operate very similarly as far as what they'll do as far as series independent or parallel hey let me show you how this works how you can set the current if you have if you're not familiar with this i'm going to run through this and, and just show you how you can set up your current limits okay and i'm going to show you something that's kind of neat about this and this guy programmable so he's you turn on the current and stuff it's a little bit different i'll just tell you right now this one when you want to set current, you just say, come down here, it says uh, current set. So very intuitive, say current set, two amps, enter. And you go, oh, volt, volt set. I want to go 18 volts, enter. And then when you hit this button, it puts the power on channel, and I'm on channel two, that's what this thing says. Actually, it's in, it says it's in parallel mode right now, so... Um, I can turn those on and off with these buttons down here and um, and turn back off that button. Now you notice when I turn this on, current goes to zero. When it's off, setup mode, it's telling you where you're set up. When you turn the load on, now it's showing, here's the volts at the terminal and here's the current. It's not putting out any current, so it says zero. So it's monitoring current volts here. Now in this one, you have one meter per output. Now over here, so you can monitor both outputs at the same time. Here you have to go between channel one and channel two to monitor the volts and current. But when you're on output two, it tells you both the current and the volts. When you're on channel one or output one, it tells volts and current. So a little difference in how it reads out the display. So that's kind of in favor of this one a little bit. Um, now the problem is the way here if you're looking this one you can go volts or amps you have to go back and forth okay so you go back and forth so you go over here you're reading current 
over here to read volts. It'd be nice to be able to see current and volts at the same time like you do here, right? Now there's ways you can do that with this one. What you can do is put them in parallel and then with this side, now they're both operating, right? So now you can put this one in current and it'll tell you current here, for instance, and leave this one in voltage and it'll tell you volts. That's how you can get current volts. Now one thing you gotta be careful about is this meter on this side is meant to tell you what this power supply is doing, this channel, and this one's meant for this channel. So when you're in parallel, and if this has one amp, then you know you have one amp in, on each one, so it's so the current's actually double, but at least you can see the current and the volts at the same time, which is very helpful when you're bringing up the voltage nice and slow in a circuit, and you can watch your current come up at the same time, that's very helpful, that's what I like to do. So you can also put them in series. You can go across here and put one of them in volts and one in current. You could do this one in volts and put this one in current. But let's say you got this one in volts and this one in current. Now this one's going to tell you, let's say it says 10 volts. That's 10 volts here, but you also have 10 here, so you have to double your voltage. You just have to remember, in series, you actually have to double the, the voltage. In parallel, you have to double the current. But that's one way you can see current and voltage at the same time. Here, it's great because you can be monitoring channel one, but what if you go, oh, I want, I want to see what output two's doing. I mean, you have to go back and forth. So if you're independent, you might be wanting to watch them both at the same time. In that case, you might have to use a meter. So, you know, advantages and disadvantages both, both ways. If you're just running one output, you don't have to double anything. It's going to tell you 18 volts and two amps. It's going to tell you whatever. Whatever it's putting out, it's going to tell you. So, in that, in that sense, this guy might have an advantage. But anyway, both very nice power supplies. Really like them both. If I had to have just one, I would go with this guy. More power and it's variable. But I'm sure this guy's going to have a lot of fun features that I can work with. Let me wire it up and show you how you do that. All right, so this is a standard way. And right now we don't have any current or anything. Got to degauss my current probe. My hand tech current probe. Okay, so the current set for half half an amp per division, and the volts are set for one volt per division. Okay, so let's let's creep this up and and put let's say um, let's put two volts. Okay. We got two volts about a half an amp. Okay. I'll go a little higher, say four volts. Well, just over four volts. Okay. Now I'm monitoring voltage here. And right here I see uh, about one amp and about four volts. So if I if I move this over to current, I got about one amp. Four volts. So I'm just using this output. This output's not doing anything. I kind of hit that button. That's why you saw that light. Sorry about that. But anyway, yeah, you move this around. It's not going to do anything. I can hear relays clicking, trying to control this, but it doesn't do anything to this side, which you wouldn't expect it to, but I just want to point that out. <clears throat> Here's something I want to show you. Let's say you want to set this for one amp, okay? What you can do is short that guy out okay and it's set up 0.3 amp. well hold on a sec that's volts okay I max this out so it's putting out 3.04 amps that's the max it'll do okay <clears throat> now I can back this off to let's say I want to set it for one amp I don't want any more than one amp to go out so I set that to one amp These knobs are kind of coarse. They, you know, it's it'd be hard if I wanted to go 1.01 because it'd be hard to set that perfectly there. But look, I got it. So you can, it's doable. Anyway, that's one amp. Now take away the short. I'm still almost one amp because I got four volts on a four ohm resistor. So if I drop this down, then I look at current. It's 0.69. And 
you know you can see the voltage coming up and down over here but if now <clears throat> because I got it set at one amp once I hit there it goes into current limit so these lights both of them have warning lights this is a CC constant current and at CV constant voltage so if I bring this down that goes off I'm back to constant voltage but when this light goes on I'm current limited and I this scene won't go any higher because now it's in constant current output it's one amp output that's all it's going to do I can move that as high as I want it just stays one amp say constant currents tell me warning warning it's you know now if I want to say oh okay I changed my mind I want to go two amps okay there's two amps I'm still in constant current because I got my voltage cranked way up See, come over here. Two amps and about four something ohms is 8.6 volts. So, okay, if I drop that down below 8.6, you'll see that red light go off. Right there, 7.7, .7, back, back in voltage control. Back to three amps, I can only go up to about three times four is about 12 volts, right? It's a little bit above 12 because it's a little bit more than 4 ohms, so right around there somewhere. And you know what? If I take, if I look at current, 3.04, if I go 12.7 divided by 3.04, that'll tell me how many ohms I have in my wiring and everything all the way back to my 4 ohm load. So that's my total resistance. And um, it looks like I'm off scale here with current. There we go. Whoops. There we go. I'm sorry, that was my voltage, right? 12.3 um, volts and a little over 3 amps, it says there. So anyway, that's um, using one output, okay? Now, I'll drop that down. And so if I took this off, see, I can go up to 30 volts. 31.6 is max. But my 4 ohm resistor won't let the voltage go up that high because it only put out 3 amps, a little over 3 amps. So when I put this back in, drops down 12.7, and you got three amps. Take this off, the current goes back to zero, right? Okay, so that's kind of how um, you, you work with current limit. Just drop the current, then take away my short, whatever, and then I'm ready to start powering things up. Now, just to show you how you put them parallel real quick, put plus to plus, and return to return this black guy here and the black one over here put my two returns together <clears throat> now it's in parallel okay so this guy here he controls the voltage I'm gonna crank this all the way up I gotta put these in parallel so it's in parallel mode okay it's in parallel so now I come up and I go okay I got five volts each one's five volts because they're parallel. I got five volts, 4.87 or something. This voltage is just reading across the resistor, not across the wires, the cabling. So um, just across the resistor, it's about 1.3 amps, 4.87 um, volts. Okay. Now this red light's on constant current, but these controls don't do anything on this site. In parallel, this guy's master of everything. They're in parallel, so I can go up a little higher, because now I can put out six amps. I can come back over here and watch my current. In parallel, now I can put out about six amps. In a four ohms, that's about 24 volts, right? It'll be a little bit above that, so let's see. I got this one set in volts and this one set in current. Now remember, this is just current on one side, so it's really twice that. The red light just went on, so right there, 25 point something volts, and that's really, you know, that current 
it's double that current, right? So if I look at the current on this side, see I got three amps and three amps from this one and 3.2 on that one, so 6.2 amps. And they're, the voltage there are parallel, so they should be the same voltage. Um, there might be a little bit of voltage drop across leads or whatever, but you know, they should be pretty darn close, right? So that's parallel mode. Okay, so let's turn off the voltage and let's hook it up into series. Push this button out and leave that button in. I'll take away the, this wire, don't need that one. Okay, in series, I gotta go minus to plus and then plus to minus and plus. So that's my minus and plus and I gotta jump those two together. Okay, now I can bring the voltage up and it's in series, so it says five volts, but <clears throat> now this is interesting. This, I got them both in volts, five volts and 3.4. So they're supposed to track, right? But what's interesting in series, I can individually control the current. So I actually have to bring this current up. So I'll just max them both out. I'll just max out the currents both and now I can go whoops see it's this one's um, current limiting because I'm at 3 amps so 3 amps that in series that's the highest I can go right let's see where I am I'll put them both in current they're, they're about the same now because they're in series right so that's 6.4 volts here and it's 6.4 here, 6.4 there. So about 13 volts. And over here, it's, it says about 12.3. You know, again, there's some loss in the wiring that I'm not getting. And it's about 3.24 amps. That's how you hook up series. And this one, you'd hook up the same way. I'm gonna show you one thing on this guy. Okay, so now I've hooked up to output two. I just wanna show you something. This one, it's got, 18 volt set. Let's set the current. Uh, let's set the current to max. 2.5 current set. 2.5. Okay. Now we're all set up. All I have to do is hit out, and it'll apply the load to our 4 ohm resistor. So what we're gonna do is I got the scope set up for single capture. It's two volts per division, and half a milliamp per division here. So I'm gonna hit, and the triggers right here in the center. This one. 3.5 volts so when it hits 3.5 it'll trigger so let me turn it on just capture it there we go now this is current limited at 2.5 amps and it's putting out 10.38 volts if you took 10.38 you divide it by 2.5 that would be how much resistance we have in our wiring and the 4 ohm resistor the total now I can feel the 4 ohm resistor kind of getting warm right now okay I'll turn it off it's two volts per division. It's two, four, six, eight, and that's about 10 volts, right about 10.38, so that looks right. And the current is half a milliamp per division, one, two, three, four, five. So there's about two and a half amps. As far as rise time goes, if I move this guy over this way a little bit, line it up on one of the grids where the current starts. I like how Sigma does that. Um, okay, so we got one, two grids. God, that's like perfectly two grids at uh, two milliseconds per grid. So that's four milliseconds. So it took four milliseconds to ramp up. Now, what's nice about that, let's say you're running your, running something at 18 volts, right? And you apply power. Well, it's going to come up you know kind of a ramp nice ramp so that the voltage doesn't overshoot it doesn't come up instantly like super fast you don't get a transient so it has a nice turn on so I just wanted to point that out too this one you know you bring it on with the knob nice and slow this one has kind of a ramp to it so now this programmable, so I might be able to change that ramp. I'm sure I can change the ramp. I don't know if I make it faster, but I can definitely make it slower. And this one has a memory, so you can set up different 
um, voltage con current configurations, probably ramp-ons and stuff, and save them so that way you can try different things. So, two very nice power supplies. Let's open the hood and look inside. Hey guys, if you like this, if you like these power supplies, I'm gonna... Okay, we're in. So the input power is right here. It's got a filter and I was just looking at the green wires here because of the green wire that holds the lid on. It's a ground wire here. Oops. Let's see, Let's see if we get the light on it. So there's ground wire to this, making sure that it is ground to the frame. And it is connected here. There's another green wire from the front coming here. And the green wire coming in here off of the input power comes down to um, a little a lug here on the board that has a place for two more green wires to be connected to. Um, there's all these boards and I assume it looks like each one has a wire to this chassis so that's a, a good touch, good safety touch. Use the tie wraps, everything's wrapped nicely. Little plastic wire guides, I'm not sure what you call these things but the wire just kind of pops down inside those little guides. So nice use of those. Appears to be well made. Uh, I think this is uh, FR4 boards. Here's another green wire. So this little metal thing across here comes down on the sides. Um, I guess makes contact here and either offers some shielding or um, is a safety ground for the display up front. I'm not sure which or maybe both. And it's tied to this board which I'm assuming it gets this green wire coming back here. From this view you can see the large heat sink across the back. Very nice. So the fan is right here at this back plate and pulls air through this heat sink assembly. You can see it down here. It goes all the way across here and it has a power transistors mounted to it. And this circuit here which probably turns on it controls the transistor. Yeah, so from this view, I think you can see the heat sink assembly a little bit more. You see the transistor on the top here. Then down, down in there, you see the other one down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to see. You might be able to see there. You see my finger down in there? Right down there. Anyway, so that's pretty cool heat sink assembly. RR. Maybe you can see here on the side this large ferrite structure. That is to help EMI on this, or keep the noise off this cable. You see the heat sinks here on the transistors. Nicely done. I'm gonna have to dust this off before I put it back together. So the cooling um, pulls air through the vents on the side here, up here toward the front, and the air has to travel around these cars or down through here, um, circulating around here to come to the, this heat sink assembly until it comes out. It has a nice cooling system. And here they are side by side. And you can see the Instec, the GW has the same ground wire in the same spot. The structure, the actual mechanical structure is the same on both. They have different face plates of course, but the metal frame is the same. The uh, heat sink looks to be the same heat sink. It's a nice assembly. It's a nice heat sink assembly. And this looks like a nice transformer. Transformer, same location. It is different, of course. This one's, I'm sure, has different voltages. It doesn't have the same electronics up here. It's different. Um, over here, there are FR4 boards everywhere. I, at least they appear to be FR4. On this side, it's that, um, you know, I forget what they call this one. The kind of the brown board, brown plastic. It's a single sided board versus double side boards. So the point one ceramics here are these KCK ceramics. They're used for bypassing everything. A lot of the same uh, ceramics here, different values um, on this side, but same kind of bypassing. Same kind of cable ties and, and it looks like the same kind of connectors. Uh, same kind of routing, nice quality. Same kind of um, these little wire, you know, plastic clips on the on the frame that hold the wires, little wire organizers, I guess. 
Um, so nicely done. Okay, the grounding scheme appears to be the same. It comes through this little AC input. Doesn't have the filter that the Tektronics had. Probably saved a little money there. It has a green wire coming down to this bundle and another green wire coming from another board. You can see it's the same quality, the same craftsmanship where the parts are raised up off the board and ceramic capacitors bypassing some film capacitors as well. And both the Tektronics and the, the GW have the nice borns. Well, I think they're borns. Nice pots. So nice use of potentiometers. And again, the Tektronics up here, there, there's a ferrite block right up here. It might be kind of... It's kind of hard to see. Here, I could... Un unclip the side there. Yeah, so you can see this appears to be another ferrite structure here. I've unclipped the ground off the side of the box. So, same kind of wire organization, uh, ground wire from the side of the box coming down to this ground terminal here. So this part of the grounding scheme um, is done the same way here. It's taken off the side, uh, same way with the same kind of clip as here. So it has these same little wire organizers down here. So you can route the wires neatly. Okay, so I've taken the grounding wire off the side of this case. This one has heat shrink on it on this tech and on the GW they have a nice little uh, you know rubber boot of some kind but you can see a ferrite down here so you can see this little, this little boot up here I think that's a ferrite boot they're using brown and blue wire there on the Tektronix they have the brown and blue wire with that little ferrite block Similar construction, very similar. Both very nice. There's a plastic barrier here for safety. See, you can't see it, it's clear, but there's plastic barrier there. There's two fuses here. There's a fuse up here. There's a couple more fuses here. There's a couple fuses down there. So there's lots of safety built into this. Nice heat sink up here on that transistor. See some film capacitors here. Another nice heat sink. Another fuse here. Another fuse down here in the corner. Some bridge rectifiers standing up on the board there. Uh, again, ceramic capacitors uh, mounted off the board. There's a nice view of the heat sink transistor here they're they're not populated here on the heat sink so on this other side there's two transistors on top populated and so it's made to be flexible really nice large linear transformer there it's a nice construction nice solid power supply you can see the handles are the same the clips are the same you can see this beam is made the same way they're the same Here's the lid, the lid from the GW, it has a little slot. Tech trunks have the same, have the same slot. There's the ground clip on the uh, GW, and there's the ground clip on the Tektronix. They both seem very high quality because they're, they're essentially made very similarly. Okay, so I, I just flipped it over so it looks the same. Here's the green wire here, here's green wire here. This is GW, this is the Tektronix. Right here, there's the ground symbol in a circle. Very easy to see the circle. This one, the ground symbol stands out, but the circle is a little hard to see. And it's same with this one. These two are different. And they, they don't, uh, well actually this one is here. And that looks the same as this one. And that punch is the same as this punch which is different than this one. So there's an extra hole here and there's extra four holes here for mounting extra boards up here and extra ground uh, connections because of the extra boards. But other than that, the layout's very similar. <clears throat> there is this difference here too. There's also this, there's a metal collar that goes around the Tektronics. I think it's a shielding for this uh, display with the digital electronics up here probably more sensitive so they got a screen so they've got it um, grounded here as well as on the sides but yeah when I 
started to look a little closer. It's funny how I've been using these power supplies and I never really noticed that. And as I was looking a little closer, I could see the pattern, the whole patterns lined up. Okay, so the first thing that gave it away was the, I was looking at the side and I saw the, the vents were exactly the same vents. And the mounting on the side, you know, the, for the screws mounting the box were in the same position. And then I lifted up the handle and noticed the handles were the same and they had the same slot underneath them. So I realized they're the, they're the same chassis. So then I looked at the back and I saw the same fan, uh, an NMB fan, both using both of them. And the, whole, and the, um, the mounting patterns were all in the same spot. Now the fan on, on, on this one shifted down because it's got a different board placement inside. And the fan here is centered and it also has the option here, the GPIB option. It also has the connections for the back so that you can pull the, um, your readings into the back of it into, instead of the front. Okay, on the GW Instec, it has the switch for the different voltages here, and you put them in the, in the pattern for the voltage you have. So I have 120, and it shows this switch down here, and that switch up. So they're in the, they both have the fuses built in. So very nice. They're both CE. Oh, this one says 120 or 240 for fuses. This, the cover here is 120. Okay, this is very interesting. I haven't seen this before. So I was expecting just to find a fuse in here, and I do see a fuse, but I also see um, there's a way to rotate this to select the voltage you want. So that's pretty fancy. So that's on the, the tech, but you know the, the switch location is the same place, AC is in the same place there. So very nice instruments, GW, Instec, and Tektronics. And this one says it's made in Malaysia. It says uh, Tektronics Beaverton, Oregon, USA, made in Taiwan. So very nice, both of them, you know, very nice, uh, nicely built, put together. I guess I know what I like, and I picked out this one first, and then I needed a little higher voltage, and I found this one, Tektronics and GW. Ground wires plugging in here, ground wires here plugging in here, the front, Ground wires there, front here. There's an EMI filter on the uh, tech. GW Tektronics, um, ribbon cable, nice ferrite bead. No need for that on this side because analog input, as far as I can tell. Uh, nice Borns pots, which I think they're Borns. Uh, ceramic bypassing everywhere, so that's nice. Um, a lot of a lot of components in these power supplies. Nice heat sink. There's the transistor on the bottom. Again, the other side has the two. You can really see how the fans connect to the heat sink, how it's, and the vents are here, so it's pulled and the heat, the air has to flow around the transformer and, and then make its way into the, um, make its way into the heat sink center and then out the, out the middle. So air is forced to flow around everything. Nice thermal design. There's the control circuit for that transistor. I imagine this might be the transistor for the 5 volt output. The transistors on the other side of the heat sink might be for the tracking outputs. That's just my guess. A uh, nice ferrite bead here for protecting the signals here. Uh, nice wire ties, nice wire ties. Very nice wire organization of both power supplies. Power switch, nice big power switch. I like that power switch and a uh, uh, nice power switch here. It's easy to find. I like them when they're on the side somewhere easy to find. So anyway, nice power switches, nice buttons on the front of this guy, nice control, a little more sophisticated maybe. But this guy, for lab power supply, when you just want to control things nicely, this one's nice. There's a lot of buttons and everything that looks a little more intimidating, but very simple to use, very intuitive. So you can see how the handle goes in here. It mounts right here. Um, with these metal clips going through the handle here and so you got this metal strap with these nice strong clips mounted here 
And so, and also this top slides down into the front. So you can, this is heavy. Oh, but you can lift it up with no worries about the side. I mean, that is very strong. You can, you won't have to worry about picking this thing up. They're both very strong. And also the heavy transformer is towards the center. So the weight seems to be even, the weight seems to be evenly distributed. So it's, it's nice when you move it around. And here's the back, the GW and the Tektronics. That's before with the covers on, everything's on. And there we go. Nice guard here from the fan. So this is where the air is coming out. So it's pulled in here, pulled out there. So nicely done. Works great. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the fan from the Tektronics. I'll reach around and turn it off. I'll turn it back on. Okay. Now I'll turn it back off. Now let me put in the power cord for the GW and turn it on. Well, actually, I take it back. They sound the same. I'll turn it off. Turn it back on. Let me see if I can tell. It's a DC brushless fan motor. 0.13 amps. All right. Yeah, the part numbers look like they're the same. They're both 24 volt fans. Uh, okay. So, yeah, same fan. Maybe it's the way I had a position last time. But yeah, same fan, same noise. Now here's the switch. I don't know if I pointed out before. A rear panel or front panel so if you want back rear panel connections um, output one two and three or front panel so GPIB on this option that, that was probably an option the way the plate was mounted so that's the way that goes